sometimes when we code, we have a typo, mm -hmm. or we forget the variable name that we defined earlier, and we just have to trace back and use the console as a clue for us to go back and see what's figure out what's going on. And to avoid problems like these, too, it's, uh, it's helpful to have a text editor that works with you. So Sublime Text, for instance, comes with tab completion by default. Um, that tab completion will use variable names that you've used already to sort of help you out. So exactly. definitely um, using all the tools you have at your disposal is, is very, very helpful. Yeah, so exactly. So that. I'll show you my other completion. So I'm adding bio. Bio is my object. I hit a dot, and here you go. And bio pick. I hit tab, and then... Done. Mm -hmm. So it's it's very useful, and it's worth the time and and effort to learn uh, a good text editor. Mm -hmm. It could be any text editor, but uh, just make sure that the, uh, this text editor has these capabilities that will allow programmers and developers to um, quickly and efficiently program, such like sub, such as Sublime Text, Atom. Uh, what else? What other text editors do you recommend? I, I use Vim, so if you're willing to, to learn Vim, it's a bit uh, of a steep learning curve, mm -hmm. but rewarding. It is rewarding, and also if you're or if you're old school, you could use another type of a uh, text editor called Emacs. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> right. So <laughs> there's there's a lot of great and free text editors out there. I just recommend you just pick one and stick with it, and mm -hmm. learn how to use the tools that these editors. Uh, Come with. Yeah, because as a programmer, you're going to be spending hours, hours of your day, every day, uh, using it. So it helps to actually like the program that you're using. You can use the w 3 um, uh, org validator for CSS. Mm -hmm. uh, but something really cool uh, that we here at Udacity found was the CSS lint um, dot net, um, which is very cool in detecting errors. Um, and so. So this is how the website looks, CSSLint.net. And this is where you paste your code, CSS code here. And so you can pick and choose which errors and warnings you want to test for below. So I would say you can pick everything that is there in our Udacity style guide rules. And you can sort of see if they match with one of these errors and enable only those errors mm -hmm. and sort of run your code through it. Yeah. Um, so I have a very basic sample of CSS code right here that I'm just going to run it through. Um, so I'm, I've just enabled all the errors here just to look at um, uh, how I've been coding and what are the best practices and how, what all it catches, what errors it catches. So I'm just going to go ahead and run the linter. Um, so it says CSS lint found one errors and zero warnings. Um, so let's see what this is. <laughs> it says there is a parsing error. Um, expected RB race at line three column eight. Um, so it's pointing me to right here. Mm -hmm. hmm. So it looks like uh, you're missing a semicolon at the end of the font family rule. Oh my god, yes, I am indeed missing that. OK, um, so let's go back and change, add a semicolon here. Oh my God. Yeah, these errors can be very frustrating. I never catch them sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so now it says CSS lint found zero errors and zero warnings. So yeah, here, it looks like my code is clean now. And I also checked it through CSS lint done When you have a huge blob of JSON data just sitting inside one file, and you're parsing that data um, to display it, render it in your mm -hmm. HTML web page or so on. Um, it can happen that, yeah, it might have a lot of errors in it, or you might be missing a comma or a curly phrase, an ending curly phrase, which always happens to me. Um, mm -hmm. We actually have something called JSON Lint. Um, JSON Lint helps you validate your JSON data. So I'm going to uh, share my screen right now. Um, and take you to jsonlint.com. Okay. Um, and so here on jsonlint.com, you can see that I've pasted a very small um, piece of JSON data, um, mm -hmm. which is basically my bio object, um, which you will be working on in your resume to create mm -hmm. uh, various objects for bio work education. I can come back to that. You know, I'm sort of drifting away from the topic. Uh, but yes. Yeah. 
Um, so I have this JSON data pasted mm -hmm. inside of the JSON validator. Now I'm going to hit validate. And I see that I have an error here. Uh, under result, it says parse error on line one. And it says var bio equals this. Um, I think we have to separate the variable from the object name, <laughs> which is clearly what has gone wrong. Um, so I'm going to give just a space right here and then hit validate. And then I do that. Okay. Okay. Um, I think you don't define object names inside your JSON oh. validator. Um, so why don't you just give the JSON data without assigning it to an object, okay, and then sort of just validate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's what I was doing wrong here. Mm -hmm. um, so JSON objects do not, don't put in the object name. So you just paste in there. their object. Yeah, we can try that. We can them. even try it by, yeah, it's, it's mm -hmm. still um, giving, throwing up an error here. So just the object, mm -hmm. no there, no mm -hmm. name. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, so it looks like this blog is valid. It's a valid JSON um, file. It looks like my nesting is perfect since I have my name, I have my role. My contact has three um, separate um, attributes as well, the mobile, email, and location. So I enclose it with the uh, curly braces. Mm -hmm. And then my skills are an array. So I've defined it as an array. And that's why I have the square braces there. Awesome. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Gary. Okay, so this is jsonlint.com. Uh, whenever you find yourself um, getting stuck being able to access JSON data, just ensure that you know the structure is valid before you use that data inside functions to render it on the web page. So just like usual coding. I yeah. wonder if small mm -hmm. snippets to make sure I validate them. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Um, it, it can get crazy when you have a large amount of data. Um, I've seen just like one JSON file with just full of strings and data. So it helps to validate those.